Okay, I want to talk to you a little bit about immunoglobulin subtypes IgG and IgM in neuro-ophthalmology. Now, there's a lot more to this that I'm going to be able to tell you about in this short little video, but I just want to tell you the basics of how we need to use this in the, in the neuro-ophthalmology clinic. And it doesn't matter whether you're dealing with cat scratch fever, which is Bartonella, or whether you're dealing with rickettsia, uh, murine typhus, or rickettsia rickettsia, or any of these things, toxoplasmosis, all of them are ELISAs that are using IgM and IgG to make the diagnosis. So as you know, generally the IgM goes up in the acute phase, and then goes down, and then the IgG goes up, and then we've got some persistence of antibody, which is the memory B cell maintained immune response. And so if we catch someone early enough, both tests might be negative. So if you're too early, your IgM and your IgG would be negative. Fortunately, we don't really see patients in neurop this early. Over time, however, the IgM is going to go up. But the IgG has not had time to come yet. And then later, both the IgM and the IgG will be up, and then the IgM will go down, and the IgG will go up. The problem is when we have indeterminate values, like 1 to 64 or 1 to 128, when you have big numbers, like 1 to 512 or 1 to 1024, that's a positive. So if we have an IgM that's positive and a follow-up convalescent IgG that's positive, they have the disease. If we have an IgM that's negative, and an IgM that's super high, 1 to 2048, that's, you have the disease. But when you're in this indeterminate range here, you don't know whether you're on the upswing of this curve for IgG or whether you are the memory B cell, which means you had cat scratch last year. This person has cat scratch right now. That person had cat scratch two years ago. And that means we have to do a second titer, this convalescent titer. And if so, if the second titer is now here, you have it. But what if you do the second titer and you're here? You had it. So you need to know how to interpret the IgM and the IgG response, not for, just for cat scratch fever and Bartonella, but for rickettsia diseases that causes spotted fevers and toxoplasmosis. So for toxoplasmosis, because most people have had exposure to toxo, their IgG is going to be positive. But if their IgM is positive, and we have a rising titer, that is evidence that this is an acquired toxoplasmosis, and you should probably treat it. So you need to know a little bit about IgM and IgG.